Welcome to video lecture three of this course on St. Thomas Aquinas' teaching on the one and the many. The uh, topic of today's video lecture uh, is why the genus of the logician cannot be the genus of the philosopher. Uh, before I start explaining w why this is so, uh, the first thing I want to do is to uh, review uh, chapter, not chapter, but lecture two, video lecture two, uh, in which uh, w I was talking about uh, four implications from that follow from the fact that uh, philosophy starts in sense wonder, and uh, one of these implications, uh, if you recall, was that not everybody can be a philosopher. Uh, uh, we're not born philosophers, and. Uh, uh, not everybody is capable of uh, being a philosopher. Uh, only some p people who have the right emotional disposition for it, as right, well as the right intellectual disposition, plus uh, a lot of other um, uh, conditions, uh, uh, which I, some of which I didn't mention uh, in the uh, other lecture. For example, like uh, being in fairly good health, uh, having enough leisure time, I, I mentioned to some extent, uh, because Aristotle himself mentions this as a, a start for uh, becoming a, a philosopher. If you're out working the fields all day, you don't have enough leisure time to engage in a speculation, which for Aristotle is the highest form of philosophy and the term philosophy being analogously extended to theoretical, uh, to, to uh, practical and productive ways of knowing. But uh, for Aristotle and for St. Thomas, uh, philosophy is chiefly uh, a uh, speculative activity in the classical sense of speculation, not in the pejorative sense in which speculative and theoretical uh, were uh, uh, later on uh, uh, changed uh, to, to mean uh, by uh, uh, after the uh, the Renaissance and the the beginnings of the Enlightenment, uh, the beginnings of the modern age. Uh, the uh, so uh, in, in addition to the fact that uh, um, not everyone can be a a philosopher, uh, the um, the fact that uh, philosophy. Uh, begins in wonder indicates a very complicated uh, uh, psychological state which is necessary uh, to, uh, uh, to, to become a philosopher because of the fact that you have to experience some sort of fear of ignorance huh? uh, and that uh, just experiencing contradiction is not enough. The, the principle of non-contradiction uh, is too remote uh, to generate uh, the uh, uh, the sense of wonder that becomes the provocative thought that Plato calls uh, the starting point for doing philosophy. It's not contradictory opposition, but contrary opposition. Uh, the realization that, that in some way contrary opposites, opposites can exist belonging to a common subject that in some way causes these opposites uh, as extreme differences within its own subject or belonging, as Aristotle says, to the, to the, same, to the same substance. Uh, uh, without uh, that recognition, uh, you don't get a complete understanding of the nature of philosophy and uh, its uniqueness. So, uh, it, uh, contrary opposition, not contra contradictory opposition, uh, is, the, uh, is the principle. Uh, of the provocative thought that uh, is, is sense wonder. And this means that any attempt to, to change that philosophical principle, uh, 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 replace it with any other, is going to fail. Uh, the, uh, the great uh, medieval uh, historian of philosophy, Etienne Gilson, in a work called The Unity of Philosophical Experience, details these types of failures, although he doesn't indicate that they're rooted in this attempt to replace sense wonder 
uh, with a an other uh, another first principle. Uh, it is uh, it, this is actually uh, the uh, I'm sure what Gilson had in mind uh, as uh, something is it's, it's basic presupposition on his part, although he doesn't explicitly mention it mention it in that work as far as I know. The um, uh, so 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 any attempt to replace sense wonder with any other uh, first principle is going to fail, which is what uh, Jilson details uh, in his work. Uh, the um, uh, sense wonder is a very complicated state, as I've, I've mentioned, and um, the um, uh, but the fact that it's rooted in hope. Uh, because hope is a, a uh, an, an element that's necessary to possess in order to experience fear, huh? uh, and in a desire to uh, uh, to escape from the fear huh? uh, by uh, achieving a, an understanding of what has caused this kind of a, this apparent contradiction uh, indicates. Uh, that uh, human beings starting to do philosophy are convinced about the reliability of their sense and intellectual faculties uh, and that we, we are convinced that uh, outside of our minds uh, uh, organizations exist, huh? wholes exist, huh? part-whole relationships are real uh, and they have internal organizing principles that we can come to know that we call the truth of things. So uh, there's a conviction about the analogous unity of truth uh, at the foundation of sense wonder, as well as a, a conviction about the reli reliability of our sense faculties uh, and our, our, our knowing faculties. The, um, so we have to be convinced of the analogous unity of truth uh, in addition to uh, the uh, other uh, principles that I mentioned, and in a sense, what uh, what the philosophical quest attempts to do, what it, what it is, is the reflection of a truth on truth, uh, a, a, a truth in the intellect on the truth in things, and as a habit of mind, uh, it's a it's it's a knowledge about a prior knowledge about our own experience of this uh, conformity of one truth uh, to the other, uh, and um, the attempt. Uh, to uh, verify that conviction, uh, uh, to realize it, and nothing other than uh, the emotional and volitional satisfaction on that intellectual achievement puts philosophical wonder to rest. So that leads us in really to the question of what is a genus and how the genus of the logician is not identical to the genus of the philosopher. Uh, I did not c uh, come up with this understanding. This is something that I, I read uh, many years ago in the, the works of Father Armand Maurer. And uh, in a uh, septicentenary article that uh, Father Maurer had, had written uh, in a uh, two-volume work published by uh, the Pontifical of Institute, Institute of Medieval Studies, of, of which he was an editor, and uh, it, it, uh, it, it was based upon uh, uh, Father Maurer's study of St. Thomas's teaching about science and how, uh, how science and, or philosophy for St. Thomas was chief, chiefly a habit of mind and not a system. Uh, the, um, uh, now, St. Thomas is quite clear about this, that uh, the genus, that is the universal that philosophy studies, huh, is not the universal of, or that, of the logician. Huh? Universal in the sense that uh, all, all science engages in talk, huh? all philosophy engages in talk, that um, has as its subject not one being, huh? it's not being said of just one, but it's said, being said of a many, it's being said of a multitude. Huh? Uh, and the universal in some way is a one that uh, is uh, in the multitude or related to the multitude in some way or both. Now for St. Thomas the Logician's universal is a way of saying huh, 
a, uh, a, a, a genus huh? of a, a species. Huh? Uh, for example, all men are animals. Huh? You're, uh, you're predicating animal of all, all human beings. You're saying that's the case, right? But you're, you're abstracting from, you're not taking into consideration, you're not interested in uh, uh, considering that, uh, that genus, that universal, as a causal principle. But that's precisely the way St. Thomas understands the difference between a philosophical genus uh, and a, a logical genus. The philosopher, the scientist, is concerned about that. The philosopher, the scientist, wants to know huh, what is it in that, uh, that genus, huh, by which St. Thomas means an organization. Huh? That's the term that we would commonly use to describe what he's talking about as a substance abstractly considered. Huh? That is, uh, not considered as John Doe or, or Socrates or, or St. Thomas or Aristotle, but a, a human being, for example. A human being is an organization. Right? Uh, uh, as a, as, as a, a subject of medicine, huh? it's considered to be a, a health-related organization, huh? one that has extremes of, uh, of health going from the most completely possessed uh, and perfectly healthy to, to, the, to the most deprived. Huh? Uh, so for St. Thomas, a, a genus huh, is a whole organization made up of parts huh, that have extremes of perfection and privation. Perfection meaning perfect possession of the unity huh, that the genus uh, contains huh, uh, and that is unequally distributed uh, throughout the members of the genus. If you want to find a terrific example of St. Thomas's understanding of a genus and the way it relates to species, one of the best works that you can take a look at, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, uh, is uh, Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations, uh, uh, at the beginning of it, uh, book one, where he starts to talk about the division of labor uh, uh, and uh, how, how in making pins you can distribute uh, this cooperative act uh, to achieve a specific end by having by having a multitude of individuals contributing to the production of pins. Now, these people would all have to have be qualified. They'd have to have skills that enable them to do this, uh, and uh, therefore they they possess what enables them to engage in operations. Well, for St. Thomas, species. Uh, uh, are the enabling means for distributing or dividing up an act, uh, a generic act, which is a kind of unity uh, throughout a multitude of parts so that they can engage in uh, a, a common act and a, in, 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 uh, realize or satisfy a common desire, uh, a a singularity of, of purpose, of intellect and will and emotion huh? uh, to, uh, uh, to produce a, a numerically one act. Huh? Another example is people who belong to a fire department. Uh, I like to use this because uh, coming from New York, I'm so, so, so familiar with many people who, who belong to uh, fire department or the police department and uh, who understand the nature of organizations. Um, the, uh, uh, in, order to, in order to be able to belong to an organization and not just be John Doe huh, uh, or, or uh, Mary Smith, huh, uh, you have to have qualifications huh, uh, that enable you to uh, receive. Uh, a, uh, a type of deep uh, uh, organizational unity that distributes an aim uh, uh, through uh, your, uh, your psychological parts uh, so that you are 
uh, motivated uh, to do specific things at specific times. Huh? Uh, if you don't have the qualifications to fight fires, if you don't like to fight fires, for example, you're not likely to be good to, to be good at it. Huh? Uh, and and this this departmental aim, the department being the genus, huh? a fire department is a different genus huh? than uh, is a police department. Huh? Uh, as far as what organizations are or departments are, well, logicians don't care about that. But that's very important to people who belong to a fire department if they happen to think that they're policemen. Huh? Uh, they're not going to do well fighting fires if, if, if people who are f firefighters think that they uh, they are uh, policemen. They too are not going to be able to to uh, uh, well. Or did I say it the, re the reverse? Whatever the case. Policemen who think they're firefighters are not going to be good policemen. Firefighters who think they're policemen are not going to be good uh, firefighters. Uh, and all of these organizations have a topmost part uh, that conveys an aim uh, which is a common desire. Uh, it distributes it. Uh, and, in con in, and in conveying this aim and distributing this common aim through these parts, is uh, um, unifying those parts uh, through what business people would call a, uh, a mission statement and a strategic goal. And so the people who are involved in this are engaged in exercising tactical operations, as people in the military would say. Uh, if you take a look at St. Thomas's treatise on angels, which is one of the areas which I took a look at to, co to understand his teaching on species, uh, the, um, uh, he considers higher and lower species uh, uh, to be differentiated uh, on the basis of their perfection, uh, of a unity uh, of action, uh, because species are the generating medium uh, for an organizational activity. Having a genus uh, without species in it uh, uh, is... Uh, is strictly speaking impossible, uh, but uh, to to think about a, a genus uh, without thinking about focusing attention on the species is to like have a fire department uh, uh, with with no enabling means to act to operate, or a television station with no shows to put on. You could call yourself a television station. Uh, uh, or a radio station, if you had all the equipment and so so forth uh, to communicate, but you had no uh, you, you you had no music to play. Right? The uh, so what's what uh, for, for Saint Thomas, uh, the higher species possess a more perfect unity through which they distribute a generic act. Huh? Uh, and uh, are able to realize a generic aim in a specific way. So they're, they're, con they're contributing, like each of the organs of the body, the heart, the liver, and so on, they all contribute to the health of the body, but they do it in their own way through different communications relationships that they are unequally cooperating to, to generate. Now the person who's possessed of science uh, is a person who, who understands this very complicated uh, activity that is going on within different organizations. Each science, in a way, studies different organizations uh, and understands what it is that chiefly holds those organizations together and can chiefly break them apart. This is one of the reasons why people who are engaged in military operations uh, want to take out organizational leaders, want to capture them and kill them uh, so if they want to defeat an enemy. Uh, this understanding of the unity in things uh, comes from the ancient Greek understanding, as Aristotle tells us. Huh? that the ancient Greeks came up with their notion of unity not from mathematics, huh? uh, but they, can, they, they came up with it from their understanding of, of, of sequentialization first, as I talked about in, in a previous lecture, huh? in understanding how things come before and after, like in time and, and seasons, and they recognized that there are continua, huh? a continuum exists, but that 
different things that are continuous, huh? that have parts, that are holes, that are, are united uh, into uh, some sort of a, a continuum, uh, have breaking points, and some are easier to break than others. Uh, the, uh, if, you, if you know what those breaking points are and those, those points of strength, you know how to organize things and you know how to take them apart. Uh, so scientific understanding is much more complicated than uh, is, uh, and, and philosophical understanding is much more complicated than is often presented uh, by contemporary thinkers. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it involves complex activities of of, imagine, of sensing, first of all, of imagining, uh, of conceiving, and of judging, uh, and uh, analogously uh, being able to become one uh, with the subject known, uh, and uh, uh, imagine the type of relationships, uh, the part-whole relationships, that are going on within the thing known. Huh? A person who's got a scientific understanding of a subject knows how to do all of those things. And the genius of St. Thomas and of Aristotle was to realize this. Uh, uh, so uh, th th this complicated nature of different sciences and how they're, th they're studying different kinds of organizations. If you try to reduce the whole of science to one science, like mathematics, huh, for example, or physics, what you're doing is you are uh, precluding people from being able to uh, uh, to uh, understand the, the the different principles of organization that go on in different kinds of organizations, and you're condemning them to use principles totally alien uh, to a proper understanding of the subject that they're studying. Right. The um, so all right uh, the. Um, oh. There is no precise way in which we can understand St. Thomas's understanding then of what philosophy is. And uh, excuse me there for looking down at my page, but as I said, I, I would do this periodically. Uh, it's impossible to understand St. Thomas's teaching about philosophy or science without understanding his teaching about the nature of a genus, uh, uh, without uh, and, and species, uh, and how. The genus of the philosopher is different from the genus of the logician. If you don't know what his teaching in, is about opposition and uh, about the fact that there are four types of opposition for St. Thomas, contradictory opposites, contrary opposites, privation and possession, uh, and relation, uh, uh, and that all of them in some way are, are, are rooted in the primary opposition of between a one and a many, and all are an opposition between resistance, privation, and receptivity, possession, uh, then uh, there's no way in which you can understand St. Thomas's teaching on philosophy. Uh, now, uh, I have never come across uh, any, uh, any uh, student of Saint, contemporary student of St. Thomas who has delved into these issues in any kind of depth. Uh, 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 all of them. Huh? Uh, some have, have um, uh, delved into individual parts. Huh? Most students of St. Thomas uh, have no idea, uh, and these are leading students of St. Thomas, have no idea that uh, he holds that the, uh, the, the, uh, the genus of the philosopher is not the genus of the logician. Uh, uh, none of them, uh, 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 the major thinkers uh, of the 20th century, uh, really delved into his teaching on contrariety, huh? uh, the uh, contrary opposites, um, or his teaching on opposition, uh, for that matter, uh, which means that, that none of them could have understood what he was doing, and uh, they still don't, uh, which they might find upsetting. But uh, that's the truth, and uh, it's uh, not possible really to engage in a serious understanding of St. Thomas without uh, considering these issues, which uh, I'm trying to do uh, in this course. And uh, so uh, it's, this is a realization I came to uh, 
about 20 years ago. Uh, and it's very upsetting because what it means is that you have to restudy uh, and redo everything that you've uh, studied up to that point. Uh, and that you can't possibly be professing uh, the discipline that you claim to be possessing. Now, this is not only problematic with respect to uh, people in philosophy, this is problematic with respect to people in science, people in, who call themselves scientists today, because they're equally befuddled uh, in not understanding the, uh, the nature of the disciplines. Uh, so, all of the major disciplines uh, in higher education, social sciences especially, uh, uh, but even in the physical sciences, um, have to rethink uh, what they're doing because the major proponents of these disciplines in actuality uh, cannot tell you precisely what it is that they do, uh, precisely where they get the principles from, why these principles work, uh, and how the universal that they study is different. Uh, what is the universal of the subject matter that they study? Um, if you think uh, that uh, I'm exaggerating this, ask these people these questions and you'll find out pretty quickly that they can't tell you the answers. Uh, the, um, so, the, uh, I'm going to go into a more extensive analysis of St. Thomas's teaching about uh, uh, genus and species. Uh, uh, in the, the second lecture in this, in this class, but uh, I think uh, that is this, the, the second lecture, the, uh, the next 30 minute lecture for uh, lecture three. Uh, but I think that's been a lot of material for you to digest uh, at the moment. And so I'm gonna leave off here and come back and uh, I, I'll try to review a little bit some of the things I already talked about and uh, hopefully by the time you finish this third lecture uh, you will start to see the organizational genius of St. Thomas and why it, why it is following these very principles that he and Aristotle before him uh, were so capable of producing the massive amounts of works that they did in the order in which they did. Uh, and why it is that so many students of people like Aristotle and St. Thomas, once they get a glimpse, even if they don't fully understand these organizational principles that they have, uh, become, tend to become organizational geniuses themselves. We're ready to go into a more detailed uh, uh, examination of St. Thomas's teaching about a genus uh, and its relationship to a species and to the subject of a science of which the genus is for St. Thomas. Uh, in order to do this, what I want to do is to return to something I said about a genus uh, a, uh, a while back. Uh, in which I identified the, the uh, origin of the, the uh, notion of a genus uh, in Greek physics, and one might even say that it's, it's there prior to, to Greek, Greek physics, uh, in uh, Greek mythotheology, uh, where matter is seen as the generating principle or cause of a... a um, of the universe, of the gods, and of the universe. So, uh, in its origin, the term genus uh, did not have the kind of uh, logical indifference uh, to uh, generating causes that the, the logical understanding of a genus develops uh, later on. And um, the, um, the the philosophers retained that understanding of a genus, and uh, this is why when I, I say that um, that logicians, when they talk about something like a department, uh, like uh, if we were to talk about a philosophy department or, or a theology department, uh, and uh, and they they refer uh, the uh, this genus uh, to a, a subject, a species of which they're talking, 
uh, or a, a species of an individual of which they're talking, they're, they're, they're referring this in a kind of, with a kind of indifference to including a causal relationship which uh, philosophers and scientists mentally attach to the genus. So when a, a person in a theology department talks about the department, departmental meetings, for example, or uh, a person in psychology does that, or a, a business person does that, or if a military person so, uh, talks about a, a division, huh? uh, that, uh, that person is including in that understanding, uh, in the use of that term, uh, an analogous reference, which makes that uh, that sense of uh, that definition uh, uh, unequally said uh, of the subjects of which it's predicated. Uh, that's uh, very very important to understand uh, with respect to um, understanding how we talk about uh, uh, different. Uh, subjects of, of sciences. Uh, Aristotle retains that understanding of a genus and uh, the importance of defining the genus or the subject matter of a science in all of his works so that at the very beginning or close to the very beginning of all of his works what he does is he, he um, relates the subject of the science to a natural human desire and to uh, a subject of study related to that natural human desire. Like in the metaphysics, all human beings by nature desire to know, or in the ethics, all human beings by nature uh, seek to be happy, or uh, in the politics, how uh, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, or, or even in the ethics again, all, 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 every every practical and productive act, huh? uh, every uh, every doing uh, aims at some good. Huh? Uh, in the in the politics, when he talks about uh, how it's out of the natural family that the city grows, huh? the, uh, eventually huh? that uh, uh, the uh, the city presupposes the existence of villages. The villages presuppose the existence of, of uh, towns. Uh, towns presuppose the existence of families uh, or clans. Huh? Uh, and uh, uh, so, so, so the, 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 this sense of principle is not the same as a principle where, uh, if, if you remember, uh, a principle for St. Thomas is a starting point uh, for being, becoming, or knowing. Huh? And in respect to knowing, you could also say uh, of saying huh? or talking about something. So uh, when the when the, the logician is is using a principle or a logical principle, that's chiefly related to referring a definition huh? uh, to a a multitude of subjects. Uh, and retaining the unity of the meaning of the definition. Right? Uh, it's not uh, predicating that definition the way a philosopher or a science, scientist does, where that philosopher or scientist wants you to focus attention on nuances of differences of the way in which department would be said of a theology department, a philosophy department, uh, a fire department, a police department. All of those are departments but they, saying them of those different subjects does not mean the same thing. Uh -huh. uh, in, in the language of university, and we're going to start to talk in a little while in another class coming up, about the difference between university and analogous predication. And this is why de uh, uh, focusing attention on uh, the nature of uh, uh, the meaning of a principle uh, is a good segue, it's a good lead-in uh, to that, uh, uh, that subsequent discussion. The, um, so uh, when uh, there's, a, there's a difference between, and I think I mentioned this already, 
a principle simply as a principle and a principle as a cause. Uh, one of the, what, what the cause does is add to the notion of a principle uh, that of, uh, of producing a likeness of itself uh, within the effect. So uh, that uh, if, if what, a, um, uh, what the philosopher studies uh, uh, is a subject that is an acting nature, that's kind of redundant, but it's an acting subject, huh? uh, then, uh, and, and the person wants to know huh? uh, that acting subject, then the cause, in a way, that, that is reproducing in the individual this desire to know huh? uh, of, of replicating agency uh, uh, that uh, within this uh, the knower, uh, the person who seeks to know, a, a likeness of the agency, the activity, the organizational activity that's going on within the thing. Huh? The, it's this sense of genus that uh, the, uh, the, the philosopher, the scientist wants to understand. Not simply the specific difference, what makes this different from that, and so on, in a kind of abstract way. But what is it that the, this, this difference, huh? this specific difference of the philosopher and the specific difference of the, uh, of the scientist is not identical uh, to the specific difference of the logician because it's a generating principle. Huh? The, the generic principle right, generates an action. That action that it generates is simply a, an organizational unity. Uh, a, a, the most remote genus in this sense would be being an organization. Uh, wh whether, whether you are a theology department or a philosophy department, an educational department, a business department, a, a, um, a service department in a, in a, of city workers like a police department or a fire department, uh, you, uh, as, as a genus, uh, you are, uh, you're, uh, you've achieved your action uh, to the extent that you achieved departmental unity so that you can cooperate to perform an action. Now, in this world of ours, real genera and real species exist. That is, within any kind of composite whole, there is a, an organization which exists uh, as a unity, right? like as a human being, as an animal of, of this species or that species, huh? uh, which, which then becomes a kind of proximate genus huh? for uh, individuals. Uh, uh, or, or, uh, the, just like Socrates' habits huh? uh, of music and philosophy become a, a, a kind of proximate genus for different actions. Why? Because they're, they're, they're generating actions. Huh? But first you have to have the organization. Huh? Uh, but the organization is not what you're chiefly concerned about as just a kind of general or remote organization. If you're a human being, right, once again, uh, and you have habits of bowling, uh, but you're also a firefighter, right, these are different habits. And so they're generating different actions. Huh? So it's irrelevant to the fact that you're a, a, a firefighter that you happen to be uh, healing somebody medically huh? if you have the skills of a physician. It's the medical art or the medical science that's doing the healing hmm? and not the fact that you're a human being. So St. Thomas will say that's an accidental kind of predication. That's not essential talk huh? when we're talking scientifically just to get you familiar a little bit with the way we're going to address this issue of, 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 of speech and, and analogy and so on uh, in, uh, in the way scientists and philosophers in the classical sense talk. The, um, so uh, having experienced a, a, a wonder in things uh, about a subject, right? Uh, there is a desire on the part of 
a, a, a human being to act, uh, uh, to, to investigate, uh, uh, and uh, to, uh, to organize one's, one's psychological habits so as to be equipped to understand the organizational principles that uh, exist within the thing that you're studying. Uh, that that kind that kind of desire to act um, uh, to understand apparent contradiction uh, is not present in the uh, in the mindset of the the logician. Uh, uh, it's that recognition once again so of the apparent contradiction uh, and of co having causal organization. In, in the thing, uh, causal operation, uh, uh, causal opposition, uh, that's revealed in signs, uh, that is, external ways of behaving. A person who's got an illness uh, uh, will, uh, will evince signs of that, uh, that uh, illness, symptoms, as we call them, right? Or people in the med medical profession would call them. Uh, and the uh, uh, the, the symptoms will tell to the person with medical expertise something about the way that that uh, uh, that specific organization is uh, the, the, the human being say uh, is uh, 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 internally uh, operating huh? what's what's going on within uh, the uh, St. Thomas gives the example in distinguishing uh, the the genus of the philosopher uh, from uh, the genus of the logician of the geometrician and how the geometrician is has as the subject of study uh, substance uh, uh, but quantified substance rather than the qualified substance of the physicist. The physicist is studying a different type of organization uh, ty a type of uh, organization that is um, <clears throat> has principles that generate movement huh? that is not of interest to uh, the uh, uh, the geometrician, but the geometrician studies a figured body, uh, a body that has dimensions, uh, a surface body, and those qualities exist. Huh? The qualities that the physicist studies exist in that surface body, but the geometrician is not interested in that organization, uh, those principles of organization. The geometrician is indifferent to those principles of organization. Um, the geometrician, that's why St. Thomas will say that the, uh, the, 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 uh, the mathematician uh, studies form, uh, uh, is, uh, is cheaply interested in formal cause, not an efficient cause. Uh, and um, and final causes, uh, because uh, a person, by the time you've you've, you've uh, been able to engage in the induction, uh, the kind of abstraction uh, that is the habit of the mathematician, you've already gone through that ordinary experience uh, uh, of of human beings uh, on this, uh, which which is is common. Huh? To the, to the empirical, as we would call it today, and it's a bad term to use, testing. Huh? Because, strictly speaking, uh, we, we don't test with our senses alone, we test truth with uh, our intellects. The, um, but, but getting back to the, the, the subject at hand, uh, the, um, uh, the, the organizational principles of the mathematician, right? That the mathematician is curious, curious about what gives gives uh, figured unity to the body and uh, to this to this uh, uh, extended d dimensional body uh, is not the same thing that gives to it political unity uh, or uh, that gives it the kind of unity that we identify with health. Uh, Saint Thomas also makes a, a distinction between. Um, the kind of the the kind of uh, a genus uh, that is um, that is a uh, is is a study of well involves 
the, the, the subject called celestial bodies, uh, which, in, which the ancient Greeks considered to be made of a, up of an everlasting matter. Right? And uh, that, that genus, that organization, everlasting matter, right, has a principle of organization in it that is not identical to, uh, to the kind of principle of organization that's incorruptible matter, that uh, St. Thomas would identify as being uh, present here on the earth. But, uh, but uh, so, so these are different genera. Why? They're different organizations. They have different principles of unity within them. And as a result of those principles of unity, they're going to engage in different kinds of movement, uh, action. Now, the astronomer, uh, who's a physicist uh, in antiquity, and I think properly so-called, uh, the, um, is interested in the movement of those heavenly bodies, whether, they, whether the, the, uh, the, the, the body is made up of everlasting matter or not. And so, uh, from the standpoint right, of being mobile, huh, of moving, um, that everlasting body, which is a different genus than this corruptible body, can, be, can belong to the same genus from the standpoint of science. Huh? Uh, according to St. Thomas, science studies a multitude of beings, uh, and it does so by means of one habit. That habit itself is a genus. Why? It's got a certain type of organization to it. Huh? Uh, and that organization is related to the things it studies, which have helped organize it huh? to reflect the organization in the things that the scientist uh, is studying. Uh, that's why I said if you use the term system to identify with genus, well, in a way, philosophy is a genus. The thing known and the knower belong to the same genus. Uh, to put it in modern language, you say, well, they belong to the same system. I don't like using the word system because it, it inclines people to think of a logical system and it gets them confused. Uh, but uh, the, uh, it's one act of knowing that involves the knowing power and the thing known, just like it's one act of seeing that involves the, uh, the, 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 know, the, the, the knowing and uh, visual power of a human being, uh, because we see with our knowledge, uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, through the organ and with our faculty of sight. See, St. Thomas is teaching about science cannot be intelligible without the scientist, that is, without the knower. Science is a, a caused activity. Human beings are knowing principles. Uh, we generate science. Um, how do we do it? By knowing, uh, uh, by an, a, a habit of knowing that's replicating the organization that's going on in things uh, that we've been able to grasp and through a very complicated activity of sensing, imagining, judging, reasoning, explaining, we replicate uh, in, a, um, in, in a, a multitude of ways. Now, the more intelligent we are, the less effort this takes. This is why St. Thomas distinguishes members of species uh, on the basis of a kind of internal unity that they have where they possess an organizational act as it can be distributed uh, through a multitude uh, with as little as possible dependence on external assistance. So the more internal liberty that you have, uh, uh, by means of which you can possess an organizational unity and an organizational act, right? Uh, and generate within yourself an action, the highest the species, the higher the species you are. So St. Thomas will say repeatedly, the maximum of any in any genus is the cause uh, of uh, is, is the cause uh, of um, uh, whatever is in that genus. Huh? Uh, the um, um, that is, it's the, it's the chief distributor. It's that which all of the lower species seek to, uh, seek to generate, to, to bring into existence. Remember that an organization, huh, a genus, is actually generated from parts. Huh? Uh, like uh, the oak tree 
uh, comes out of uh, uh, the acorn. Right? And the parts grow out of the seed. As Aristotle will say, the end is already in the beginning. Huh? It just becomes maturely developed. An organization is not just developed by one individual. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the organization requires a multitude of individuals cooperating uh, uh, with, with unequal skills. Um, and uh, well, each having some sense of what the organization is about uh, and what they chiefly uh, want, to, uh, want to achieve. One chief act, uh, like putting out extinguishing fires. Right? Uh, the, uh, the fir you first have to organize uh, uh, into a department uh, to be able to do this, but you have to have qualified individuals. And the more uh, St. Thomas gives these, this example with respect to the angels that the highest of angelic natures uh, is that angelic being uh, that uh, is able to comprehend the whole of the created order uh, with fewer ideas because the, God knows everything without any external assistance and without any uh, the, the, the need for any ideas. By knowing the divine essence itself, God knows all things. Whereas the more intelligent you are as an angel, the fewer ideas that you're going to need to comprehend the whole of creation. Right? And the less intelligent you are, the more ideas you're going to have. Uh, and the less of the created order that you're going to comprehend uh, in as uh, perfect a way. Right? Similarly, that, uh, if, you, if you, uh, you, you make an analogy with sports, uh, the ancient Greeks considered gymnastics uh, to be the highest of the uh, uh, of the physical disciplines because uh, because all of the uh, the kinds of, of physical type of skills that that you need uh, to exercise uh, in the in the different sports activity are most completely manifest it's the maximum in the genus of athletics huh? Uh, the maximum of, in, in the genus of, of healthy beings uh, is the uh, is that uh, that, that uh, human being that is most healthy, right? most completely possessed of that harmonization of organic operations, huh? uh, and all human beings seek to to uh, be. Uh, uh, to be like that being, and they are known uh, in terms, in relationship to those, uh, to that being. Just like the, the greatest of athletes in this or that sport, right, uh, becomes the measure, uh, uh, as St. Thomas says. The maximum of any genus is the measure uh, of everything else within that genus, because it's in that individual, like in the commanding general of an army, uh, who understands the chief aim of the uh, of the organization, namely victory? Right, uh, that leader, uh, that maximum in the genus, retains the relationship between the parts of that organization and the uh, the existence of the organization. Once an understanding of that aim is lost, the organization tends to decompose, it tends to fall apart. That's how you break it apart, uh, by dividing it from its chief aim. Uh, that's the weakness uh, in human organizations. Uh, the, uh, uh, and you might, uh, if you want to divide a plant uh, from its chief uh, organizational aims, well, you pull it out by its roots. Uh, you pull it out by its principle. Uh, but, um, uh, the, uh, for, for human beings, uh, you, you have to have an understanding of that, that chief aim that you are seeking. Now, the person who best understands that chief aim is not necessarily the person who has the title of being the, 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 the chief, uh, the CEO, huh? chief executive or officer of a, of a, a, a group. Uh, but somebody has to have it. It can shift at times. Uh, 
the, you, you can have hereditary regimes, for example, in politics where you have infant rulers. Now, obviously, these people are rulers in name only. Huh? They are not the maximum in the genus. They are not the chief cause uh, for the unity that is maintained and exists within the genus that enables it to act, enables it to operate. Okay? The, um, but uh, the extent to which you can get things done, the extent to which you can operate, perform your work, where you don't have to depend on people or things outside of you, right? Uh, where you have an internal unity in your operations, which is not um, uh, is, is is simple, uh, like the uh, divine simplicity, right? not constant. The fewer parts that you need, right, uh, internally to generate an action and externally to depend upon, uh, so that you can generate the action. The more perfect you are as a a member of that uh, genus as a species. Huh? So uh, the division of species huh, is based upon uh, this intrinsic perfection of unity, a kind of internal liberty. Huh? Um, Yves Simon uh, in uh, uh, a work on, I think it was Freedom of Choice, a little work, uh, calls uh, uh, freedom in its most precise sense, an act of indifference produced by masterful choice. Huh? Uh, now, he's talking about moral or political freedom there, uh, but in a sense, uh, it's an act of indifference, and, and generically, right, as far as having this internal ability uh, to, uh, 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 to be a principle of an operation and not depend upon anything else around you. I think it's it's uh, for this reason, among others, uh, that Aristotle um, that Aristotle maintained uh, this the understanding that he had of this unmoved mover, uh, that a a being uh, you know, that is uh, totally one and complete, uh, and uh, in, in a sense is the cause of all genera. Uh, uh, cannot have any composition whatsoever. And for, Ar for Aristotle, for a thing to move, it has to be composite, right? which is an another point to, that is necessary to understand rela in relationship to his understanding of, uh, of the, the relationship of genus and species. Uh, all that a genus does is give uh, the act of unity to things. It doesn't enable it to engage in, in uh, secondary acts, huh? operations. Huh? Species do that. That's why, that's why Aristotle is uh, one of the reasons he's critical of, say, of, of, of Plato's understanding of forms existing apart from physical things, because they don't have. Then the form does not have within it huh, uh, the connection to the material universe, so as it can generate action within things any more than the unmoved mover does. Huh? Uh, in, in Aristotle, the, the unmoved mover can only move things as an object of love and, uh, our, and uh, things must already have the operational, uh, uh, the operational fa faculties uh, that are everlasting uh, in this universe below here on the basis of the, the everlasting matter uh, of the heavens and the, the everlasting movement uh, of the heavens. Uh, the um, so um, uh, the chief point I want to get uh, in, uh, across to you uh, in relationship to the notion of genus and species and what uh, what philosophers studies uh, philosophers study is that for philosophy science is is strictly speaking even though I say it's a study of of, of a, a, a genus it's a study of different species of action uh, and uh, it's a a study of how that different species of action is, is divided up within an organization and the, the, the organization itself is, is the genus. So when you think about a genus, if you simply think about, well, it's just simply an organization, but I'm, it's not an organization that I'm considering as acting. Huh? Uh, because if something is acting, it has to have unity. Um, now, unity itself is produced by some type of action. Huh? But that presupposes relationships <laughs> that 
So, so, so in a sense, relationships uh, that have certain qualities to them that enable things to be related. For example, if you want to walk, um, uh, to talking, talking about opposition and how opposition for Aristotle is necessary for action, uh, if you want to walk, most human beings need shoes. Uh, and if you, uh, not only do you need shoes, but you need a surface upon which to walk. Uh, most, uh, uh, most surfaces, if you go barefoot, uh, are going to be too hard on uh, feet, uh, unless your feet are very callous. So you're going to have to have a certain quality of foot for a certain quality of surface in order for you to walk. Otherwise, you're going to have to have a certain quality of shoe. Okay? Now, unless you have those relatable qualities, right, which are opposites, right, but they're not totally total contradictions. Notice this, huh? The ones, the existence of one doesn't negate the existence of the other. The two of them can be unified, uh, so as to coexist in one being. And when you unify them, right, when you fit this foot that is a size eight foot uh, into a size eight shoe, because you've got, say, like a convex and concave. You know, kind of kind of relationship going on, then you can walk. Right? But until you have that unity, that's the result of uh, those relationships, uh, which are dependent upon the existence of qualities, uh, real qualities. Uh, then there's no way in which you're going to have uh, uh, to engage in operations. Huh? So these notions of quality, relationship, species genus huh? that many thinkers uh, w with the beginning of modern thought um, dismissed as kind of uh, medievalisms and backward notions uh, that uh, uh, they, they had uh, uh, been, been capable of now transcending uh, in their uh, more enlightened age uh, are um, indispensable. And they're presupposed uh, by uh, a scientific and philosophical thought uh, properly understood. The, um, uh, so um, while this is a little bit complicated, I think uh, if you, uh, if you uh, uh, recognize that the concepts themselves are not that difficult, right? uh, it's just simply the terminology. Uh, that uh, makes understanding philosophy, um, classical philosophy, uh, pretty much any, any, any type of intellectual activity that claims to be philosophical. It's the jargon uh, that's difficult. And once you start to become familiar with the jargon and you start to translate it into your own language, uh, so that it becomes easier for you to understand uh, the fear that you, you might have in uh, trying to, to master uh, the teaching of someone like St. Thomas um, will disappear because, as, as Adler, uh, Morton Adler has rightly noted, uh, the best of teachers are, are the great discoverers. Uh, uh, these people are best able at giving you explanations of what it is that they've discovered, uh, uh, at least in principle, uh, because they've got the best knowledge. Uh. Uh, very often, that's not the case in practice because children at times are better off and <laughs> better able to explain uh, to other children what adults are trying to say to them than uh, uh, than uh, adults are. Uh, but uh, if you learn how to speak the language of a child, uh, then uh, if you're if you're the person who's 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 the great discoverer, like Saint Thomas is or Aristotle is, then you can. Uh, you can easily understand uh, what they're talking about. What they're talking about is not really that, uh, that complicated, but the language, the jargon, is complicated. And until you have the right piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. uh, that enables you to speak in a way that is simple for people to understand, uh, unhappily what happens is we tend to get people confused. And it's, it's a slow process of... of uh, getting this kind of clarification and getting this precision because as St. Thomas says, the first thing we, 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 we know, and Aristotle recognized this too, our first experiences of things is 
from afar and from generic, in a generic way. Even in the level of sensing, what we sense first uh, is not mommy or daddy, but this something. Huh? And then this something get, takes on differences that becomes more and more precise. Well, this is, this is the case in this course. Huh? Uh, well, what St. Thomas means by philosophy, what he means by science, each of these classes will become hopefully more and more precise huh? because they're following an order of intellectual development uh, where uh, you had to know what a genus is and the difference between a logical genus and a, uh, a philosophical genus, for example, not only to understand St. Thomas' teaching of science, but in order to understand his teaching about predication and teaching. Huh? Uh, and uh, so the, the, these classes, these video lectures are, are um, designed to reinforce things you've already learned, bring those into the next class that you're starting, call upon them to clarify, and slowly, huh, by the, the uh, end of the 15th uh, lectures, huh, uh, hopefully you will have a much improved understanding of the uh, metaphysical teaching of St. Thomas in general, and certainly about his teaching on the one and the many. One and the many. Well, uh, thank you very much.